The same way that we have sort of a minimum effective dose of 30 grams of protein in order to turn the muscles from being catabolic to uh, stimulating muscle protein synthesis. Is there a limit, would you say, on carbohydrate consumption on a per meal or per, or maybe daily? I don't know. I mean, of, of course, yeah. it's going to vary so, by age so and muscle most tissue. People, and, yeah. yeah. So most yeah. people don't recognize that we, we talk about an RDA for protein, but there's an RDA for carbohydrates, and that's 130 grams per day. The average American's eating 300. So three wow. times the RDA. So, you know, why are we obese? Well, we're eating, you know, we're eating 800 grams of carbohydrates more than we can metabolize. That's why. Uh, where did those numbers come from? We have what we call an obligatory carbohydrate need, blood glucose need, and that's for the brain and the red blood cells and the kidney. And that's estimated at around 80 grams per day and they put a little bit of a safety factor, and that's where the 130 comes from. Okay. So you have a minimum of around 100 grams per day of carbs that you probably need to eat. People will say, well, you can make it from protein, but I think that's a pretty inefficient way of getting carbs. But anyway, let's start with 100. Beyond that 100, every gram of carbohydrate you use, you have to earn with physical activity. And you earn it at about a rate of maybe... 50 to 60 grams per hour. So for the average American eating 300 grams per day, they have to have at least three hours of high intensity physical activity every day. And we know that 75% of Americans are sedentary, so they're not getting it, hence obesity. You know, that how much per meal, I've done quite a lot of work looking at things from Shulman and, and Bob Wolf and others who have done a lot of the metabolic work on flux. Um, we, can use, we can use about 20 grams of carbohydrate per hour in the body in a sedentary condition. So that means we have a meal limit somewhere around 30, possibly 40 grams of carbohydrate, three meals, there's our 120. We have a meal limit of about 40. Beyond that, we need a very high insulin response to get rid of it. So we're not using it. So now we have to store it somewhere. People say, well, we store it in glycogen. Well, you only store it in glycogen if you've used the glycogen. <laughs> right. And how do you use glycogen? Well, you do yeah. muscle activity. <laughs> so squat. If you, you got to squat while you're getting your carbs. That's what exactly. it is. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, if you're sedentary... You'd, the only other place you can do it is force it in the body fat. And when you do that, now you start getting very weird metabolism. You're insulin insensitive. You start getting high triglycerides. Your blood lipids are higher. You have higher free fatty acids. You get, you get your, your fatty liver. You get all of the negatives we associated with, quote, higher fat diets, but they're actually driven by high carb diets. That's so interesting because one of the things that we see in perimenopause and menopause, certainly, you know, we see this in men too, as you had mentioned, this sort of anabolic resistance, this insulin resistance at the level of the muscle. And we also see sort of a change in phenotype of fat as we age. So we go from subcutaneous fat, which is, you know, much to the disdain of every woman, we all want to get rid of it, yeah. but what it, it changes as we become more insulin resistant to more of this visceral fat and like the development of what you're talking about is like NAFLD and non-alcoholic fatty and, liver and I, disease. And I assume you, I assume you're familiar with it, you know, studying more of the hormone aspects that estrogen drives fat deposition in a female pattern where yeah. insulin drives it in a male pattern. Right. And so as you get the male, as you get the menopause and the hormones shift, now you get the, the, the visceral fat which is far more metabolically insensitive, much more likely to cause, be associated with diabetes or heart disease, the more, you know, the more male pattern of fat deposition. Yeah, yeah. So this is, so, okay, so we know that we've been talking about all protein is not created equal. Do you have an opinion on carbohydrates being created equal? Are there carbohydrates that you prefer, don't prefer, recommend, don't recommend? I think first and foremost, it's amount. Quantity yeah. is the number one issue. You know, mm. carbohydrates that come in the form of beans and, and lentils and, and things like that are great sources of carbohydrate because they have very high fiber content. 
their digestion is slower. So that that's great. And even, you know, beans and I mean, seeds and nuts and things like that, yeah. highly processed carbs, which are in, you know, the diet, like we, you know, you get in processed cereals or breads. I think the, the single worst carbohydrate on the market is wheat. And in the United States, actually worldwide, 80% of the plant-based protein in the world comes from wheat. Wheat is deficient in at least four different essential amino acids. And so 80% comes from wheat. That's a major problem with vegetarians. And I, my comment earlier, vegetarians need a lot of food knowledge and a lot of food skills Mm -hmm. You can't just opt out to say, I'm going to eat more cereal and bread because it's totally unhealthy. You know, so what we think of as healthier plant based foods of beans and lentils and and, you know, uh, nuts and seeds, those are the those are true. But if you look at the people in the United States who have the highest plant based diet, they get less than nine percent of their protein from that those groups. 80% comes from wheat. And wow. so A, if you're going to do it, you need to know what to do and you need to make a lot better choices than what people have demonstrated they're doing. Gosh, that, I mean, the, and I, I, I have friends who are vegetarians and yeah, you just, it's like you can get there with plants, but you just really need to do your jurisprudence is what I think you're, it's what tough you're and you better yeah. be physically active. You better yeah. be using muscle to protect your muscle mTOR, your muscle structure, your muscle strength, because having a low protein diet, you know, having protein intakes less than 70 grams is not going to do it as you get older. Yeah.